here is my 29 gallon community tank which I have not shown on camera in quite some time. I have rescaped this tank um, I don't know five months ago or so. Um, the large rock decoration used to be in the center and the wood was in other places. Um, I moved some things around and I've been having a little bit of an issue with plants in this tank for some reason. I'm not really sure why I lost all of the water wisteria that I had in here. So I added the willow hygro or hygrophila angustifolia and um, that's actually it there. That did okay but it wasn't thriving, so I added this Pogo Stemens Thalatus, and that is putting out a lot of nice new growth. Um, let's see, what is she doing? What are you doing? This is my female peacock gudgeon. This will focus. It's really fixated on something here. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I recently got these African water ferns um, or Bulbitis hugulata, I think it's called, and I was so excited to find those. Um, when I first got into the hobby, they were prolific. They were everywhere. Um, and then they really started becoming hard to find. And I heard that it was because where they are native to, they were being unsustainably harvested. And whoever uh, was in charge of that land or that environment said, stop it, no more. And so they were really hard to find for a while. I just found three of them at my Petco and they were in the tubes and I kind of flipped out and bought all three of them, um, which I'm probably going to have way too much now, but I do have another piece of Mopani that is soaking that is going to go kind of leaned up in this direction here that I will attach those to. Uh, there is my big male emperor tetra, or nematobrachan palmary. He is a good two and a half inches, and I think he is just stunning. My neon tetras do have neon tetra disease. I am down to nine of twelve of them now. Um... So I'm not adding any new fish to this tank or moving, sorry for the glare, moving any of these fish out um, from this tank into any other tank. When I am finally, um, when I finally lost all of them, I have read that cardinals are resistant to that. So I will probably replace them with cardinals I do also have two male dwarf gouramis in this tank, which is not advisable. <laughs> um, this was my first tank that I set up that was a community tank, and I really liked them, so I bought two of them. And when I got them home, they started fighting nonstop, and I had to look up ways to try to stop that. And basically what I did is what people do for cichlids, adding a line of sight breaks, which is why the big rock decoration was in the direct center of the tank. Uh, lots of plants, jetherfish, the um, leopard danios are super fast and distracting. Um, larger peaceful community fish, which are the emperor tetras, which actually aren't really all that peaceful. The male is a giant jerk. <laughs> and then um, the peacock gudgeons. So 
I don't see... Yeah, she has stopped fixating on whatever this was. I don't see the male, but he is around. Oh, I think that's him back by that cave there, which is interesting that he is guarding that cave right now. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, no one wants to see you anymore. Get out of the way. There he is. I've never seen him guarding that cave before. Oh, well, maybe not. I don't know, I'll check on it later. But yeah, that is the 29 community tank. Slightly overstocked to prevent aggression. And um, since I've taken those measures, the two Garami do not fight anymore at all, which is great. I don't know where the other one is right now. But yeah. Here is Vesper's tank. And there you can see five uh, black neon tetras. Uh, what are they called? Herbert Axelrodi. Something Herbert Axelrodi. And there is Vesper hanging out at the top. So I have been having some hair algae issues in this tank. And I believe it is because of the light that came with the hood for this tank, which had two bars of these really, like, surface of the sun bright blue-white spectrum LEDs. Uh, but I have since replaced it with one of my Aquions. That would be the OptiBright Plus. And it is a much better light level and it does have red in it also. And since I've replaced it, the hair algae has really been dying and it's been dying quickly. Um, and I'm just removing like tons of it that's just coming off the plants um, on a regular basis. I am also treating this tank now for cyano. Um, I'm not... 100% sure how I got that in here, but I did. The water wisteria has not been doing so well, but I think that was again due to the light that I had on here. Sorry for the glare again. There is my most lazy nerite snail. I honestly don't know what he eats because it's not algae. <laughs> And this Bulbitis heteroclita, or Asian water fern, this plant also came in one of those tubes and has been struggling, um, but it is putting out new little plantlets at the tips of the older leaves. So I'm hoping I will be able to take those and uh, regrow it basically. So yeah, this tank's been doing pretty well. Just gonna rest at the top. Okay. And if you had watched um, a previous video that I did, you'll know that one of the black neons from Vesper's tank had a weird fungal issue. Anyway, I was able to treat it with Ickex and um, I waited like a week before, you know, well it had no symptoms and I put it back in the main tank. And where are these fish? Oh, they're both up in that corner. It came back on the same fish and a smaller one. Sorry, I can't really get the camera over there. Um, so I've been retreating them with Ickex and it is going away again, but I would really like to know what's causing that. Here is my Pleco. He is a common Pleco. And let's see, 
he is about 13 years old. Um, you can see like right there is a big pit in his head where he had a hole in the head. Um, I got him with a lot of problems from a relative. He is laying like this, um, not just because he enjoys it, but because his spine is bent like that. Um, and that is because he lived 12 years of his life in either a 20 or a 29. Um, so he cannot lay flat and he is currently in the 40 gallon that um, I was able to convince the owner to upgrade to. Um, but it's not large enough, obviously. He does have some hornwort and this Anubius hostifolia that he keeps removing from the rock. Um, so we've had some issues. You can see he's got a large tumor. Um, that tumor has decreased in size. Um, it used to be um, maybe a third larger. Um, let's see, he's been treated for skin flukes and internal worms. He is an extremely picky eater. Um, he will only eat the tetra algae wafers. He will not eat fluval bug bite algae wafers, hikari wafers, repashi. He will not eat zucchini. He will not eat green beans. He will not eat organic, salt-free, and French cut green beans. He will not eat broccoli. He will not eat lettuce. He will not eat frozen brine shrimp, freeze-dried brine shrimp, or cooked, deveined, and detailed cocktail shrimp. Um, he will occasionally eat a little bit of blanched spinach, um, but those are basically the only two foods that he had had for like 12 years. So I think he's just kind of set in his ways. Um, oh, he also will not eat green peas. Um, and I do have a piece of cholla wood in his tank too that he chews on sometimes. Um, but yeah. So the exciting news that I have about him is that we did get him a 125 gallon tank. This is the gigantic 125 gallon tank, which will barely fit on my camera screen. I'm standing on the opposite wall from it. Um, it's got a nice solid wood stand. Um, my LFS has these made by a guy in Detroit, um, made custom for different sizes of tanks. We just yesterday evening were able to pick up one of the filters for it that we had ordered. Um, and we were trying to get either the Aquion or the Sepora, but um, there's a glass shortage right now. The glass shortage is apparently caused by um, the auto manufacturers having shut down in the spring due to COVID. There's just one of the 200 watt heaters that's going to go in it. And so glass manufacturers cut production since the auto industry is like their biggest customer. Um, and we were told it could be months before they got in either one of those tanks for us. But they did get one in and it's awesome. So I think this weekend we're going to clean it up and start filling it with some water. You can see it is a half inch glass. Even the lid is a quarter inch thick glass. And this is absolutely massive compared to what he is used to. So I think he's really gonna like it. I also got a eight inch diameter uh, thing of PVC pipe to use for a hide for him, which is not going to be the most attractive thing in the world, but um, it will work and I think he will enjoy it. 
And here is the 29 that I have set up in the basement. This will eventually be where the rainbow fish I have are moving into. Um, so I got my first shipment ever of mail order fish and they are nine of these blue star endlers. And I just love that royal blue color they have. Again, really difficult to film because they are super fast and always busy. Um, I got them from Aquatic Arts and I was very impressed with that sh uh, shipment and that company. And I do plan on ordering fish from there again. Um, all nine of them came in absolutely perfectly. So, yeah, and they make me happy, just like all endlers do. Um, this tank is being treated for cyano. So, <clears throat> where I don't know how I got it in Vesper's tank, I do know how I got it in here. Because I've been slowly moving items like that um, big piece of white fake Texas holy rock and some of the plants from the rainbow fish tank into this tank um, and I did get it in the rainbow fish tank and then of course the plants brought it into here as you can see if this will focus on it that is some of it there and it is this weird black form of BGA so I've had BGA before, and it's been actually blue-green. And um, this is a new sort of thing. At first I thought it was black beard algae, but then I noticed the really sort of like slimy, sheeting-like thing that BGA does. Um, yeah, it's odd. I also have in here three new horned nerites, which are... They are tiny. There is one up by the filter, and it is maybe about a quarter of an inch. They're really cool. I've noticed they have a little bit longer antenna than the tiger or the zebra nary snails. I also had a weird issue with pH in this tank. Um, I tested this tank maybe a month ago and it was reading 8.4 on my meter, which is high. Uh, typically my tanks run between 7.9 and 8.2 tops. And I thought, well, that's weird, you know, but the tank's still new. Let me give it some more time to settle in and two weeks later I tested it again and it tested 8.6 and I was like all right wow something is going on in this tank what is different from this tank than all my other tanks well I did have this bonsai tree that was here I got it off of Amazon from a company that pretty much just makes these bonsai trees for aquariums. And before I had fish in this tank, um, I had it in here for about a month. And it was making like these soap bubbles uh, at the top of the tank that were a little bit different from like ammonia bubbles or that kind of thing. It really, really looked like soap bubbles. And uh, the only thing I could do was water change it out. And once I water changed it out, I thought, okay, whatever is in the like wood pulp and glue they use to attach the pieces of the bonsai is gone and out of the water. But I thought that is one of the only differences between this tank and the other tanks. So I took it out stuck it in a bucket of water just in case it wasn't the issue um, so that it wouldn't dry out and it wouldn't lose bacteria. Did a water change, retested the pH, and it was at 8.2. I did another water change in a week and it was at 
Um, so that tree was causing high pH. Whatever they were using in the glue or whatever was doing that, which sucks because I spent like $60 on that bonsai tree. Uh, but yeah, that's not going back in here. Um, I have made my own before, but it is a royal pain. And I like the way the manufactured ones look better. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. And here is the rainbow fish tank, a little bit more bare since I had been moving things out of it. What's left of the bonsai tree that I made that is kind of falling apart. Um, and yeah, there's too many fish in here. That is why the rainbows and Sam, my pandagara back there, will be moving to the 29. And this was the source of the weird black, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. Um, so this tank's also being treated. That's why the air stone is just like completely cranked. The guppies and endlers are going to stay in this tank. So I have three black bar endlers. I did have four. I lost one. And I have four of those guppies there. Which if anything is a steel nebula guppy, that looks a lot better closer to that but yep there's the rainbow tank I hope you have enjoyed this tour of all my tanks seeing the new fish and the updates on the old fish um, thank you so much for watching uh, please subscribe if you would like to see any more uh, of my fish I will be having a fish room update in a couple of weeks that will be about the um, flooring installation, the pump under the sink, um, and the shelving that's going in along the long wall. Uh, however, we've hit a snag with the shelving, uh, which will be explained in that video, so um, it will be a couple of weeks until we finish it. But yeah, thanks again so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.